Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to do a video going over the five laws of gearing for planetary gears. You know, five laws of planetary gearing. These are good laws to know if you're designing or working with planetary gears, just so you can know how to design them, how to what type of calculations you can use, and just to help you get a good visual in your head as to what's going on with these gears and why you're getting the outputs that you're you're getting especially when you start working with them in different stages or multiple stages of planetary gears. So just for a little bit of review, planetary gears have a ring gear. Let me go ahead and put this into a pointer. You know, a ring gear, that's comprised of a ring gear, uh, a sun gear, and then planet gears. You know, these are the, in this case, there's three planet gears. It could have more than that. You can have, you know, as little as two, but you know, you can have, you have to have, you know, planet gears that actually orbit about the sun and work within this annulus. Now, the planet gears are held together with either something called a carrier, a planet, planetary carrier. Sometimes you might see it called an arm. And any one of these three, either the carrier itself, the sun or the ring can all be inputs or outputs and how you engage them gives you a different type of velocity ratio so you can use this one set uh, as a, with the ability to either raise the rpm you know raise it from an input to a higher output or lower it from an input to an output you can use it to do a reverse have a direct drive straight from the motor and you can even set it up for neutral conditions, all within the same one. So it comes down to a, you know, usually a series of clamps, bands, solenoids, uh, will help you engage or disengage. And in some cases, they're just set for a particular velocity ratio. So you're only capable of getting certain velocity ratios. So some planetary gears can only do an overdrive condition or only do an underdrive condition. So. Let's go ahead and go through what these five rules, five laws of planetary gearing. So I said a few of them already. So the first one is neutral. So all neutral means is that you have some sort of an input. You know, your output is basically nothing because you have uh, nothing is reactionary or no reactionary. And reactionary basically means that nothing is engaged, you know, and nothing is locked. So so you're you're not taking this out to a drive shaft someplace. So this is where you might see this a car sitting in neutral. Uh, you may see something that you see universal joint just you know, rotating. Um, you know, that's just you know the car sitting in a, an idle position. So it's just sitting in neutral. The next one is overdrive. You know that is where your carrier is the input. You know, and that's whether your carrier is the, your carrier is always going to be the input. Your output could either be the ring or the sun. Uh, the difference between the two is you're going to get two different types of outputs when you set it up that way. But, you know, it's going to have a different range between that, depending on which one you use. So you've got two, technically you have two, two overdrives. But in overdrive, your carrier is always the input. In your underdrive, you know, your carrier is always the output. You know, again, your input can be the ring, your input can be the sun. You know, so you've got two different underdrive conditions. And this is, again, underdrive, you've got a higher RPM and a lower RPM coming out. Higher RPM coming in, lower RPM coming out. Then you've got your reverse, and this is simply, you know, exactly what it is with gearing. Um, your motor is rotating in one direction, and your uh, output, your input's going in one direction, your output's coming out at the other direction. And then you've got direct drive. And this is when your any two members are locked together. And I did say something wrong. Your carrier is reactionary in this one. So basically your carrier is just moving through the system. It's not locked in. It's not technically um, uh, engaged. It's just basically not doing any of the, of the work. So let's go through and, and look at this, what you would see, kind of give you a little bit better visual of both of these. Again, your neutral condition, you have an input, an output, no reactionary. So your engine is running and nothing is happening. Your car is just sitting there in idle. And you can see this, you're, you're sitting there, you're, nothing is, is technically engaged. 
So this is, you know, whether it's your planet, your arm, or your sun gear, you know, it is, you know, the engine is tied in, but nothing is engaged. So you just basically, you're sitting in neutral. The next one, you know, like I said, was overdrive. And overdrive, your carrier is the output. So here on these two GIFs, you can see, you know, this triangle represents the carrier, you know, the, the carrier. So your carrier, imagine that is your input. So this is what the motor is tied to, you know, in both cases. Now, your carrier, like I said, there are two different types of overdrive. You know, your output RPM is higher than whatever the engine RPM is. Whatever's coming into the carrier is being amplified. And it can either go through to the sun and your ring is locked or it can come out through the ring and your sun is locked so this would one of these would be your output so if we were to look at this little diagram here your carrier is your input so you got power coming into your carrier and the output can either be the ring you're leaving through your ring or it can be leaving through your sun. Either one of those will give you an overdrive condition. So this will be higher than whatever's coming through your, your carrier. Now I'm using the same pictures here, but now I want you to imagine an underdrive condition. Now your carrier is the output. This one's going back to your differentials, right? So in both of these cases, but in this case, You've got your ring as the input. So this is coming from your engine or your sun is the input. So that's also coming from the engine. So here you have an input coming in through the sun and then, you know, you can, or it's coming in through the ring and your carrier arm carrier is your output. That's what's going to your differential. Underdrive, meaning that whatever that engine is putting in, this is coming out lower. So it's lower than the, the RPMs of the engine. Now, in this case, you know, as well as overdrive, you know, your torque actually goes up. You know, in this case, your, your torque goes up in underdrive and in overdrive, your torque goes down. There's still, just like with a you know, simple gearing, there's an inverse relationship between torque and RPM. The next law is the reverse, right? Your reverse, your carrier is reactionary, right? So you've got an input through either your planet or your, or your sun, and the output is the opposite. Now, as you can see here, so here your carrier is just sitting there, but you've got your sun and your ring are both engaged. So one of these is your input, one of these is your output, and it doesn't matter which one. And the reason this gets you a, a reversal, you know, a, a direction change from input to output, you know, so imagine either whichever one you want to consider the input and the other one is the output between your ring and your sun. What is happening is your planet gears start to work as idlers, right? So you're working as an idler and if you can see how this gearing is set up, even though this is an internal gear versus the external, the same rule will apply as your direction will change because your idler basically is engaging in one of these, you know, and be an influence. And it means it's sending the other one in the opposite direction. So here you need an input of one and the output of the other. And that could be of either one of these. Uh, but this is basically working as a, your carrier and your planet is working as an idler gear. So it is just there to make the directional change. Now, the last law is direct drive. So any two members are locked together. Now, what this does is whatever your engine is doing, the output will have the same RPM. So if we just take, for example, that your ring gear and your sun are just locked together. Basically what it does is it clamps the the planet gear and it just takes it along for the ride. You know, so whatever it is that you have attached to your output, this 
becomes one solid mass or operates as a solid mass going on to the differential, you know, your, your out to your differential, which would be your, your wheels. So you end up uh, just getting the exact same RPM that you have to your, your engine. And, you know, of course, you know, you, you are your governor as you press the gas pedal on your car will cause that velocity to go up and down. But, you, you know, it'll just be a consistent, it won't be any upshifting, downshifting, it wouldn't, as well as your torque will stay the same. So those are the five laws of gearing. And you can see how just knowing those five laws and knowing what to engage, what not to engage, or what to call the input or what to set up as the output can give you a wide range of uh, different types of outcomes for a vehicle or whatever application you're using planetary gearing on. So it's a really good uh, thing to keep in mind when you're doing design with a planetary gearing system. Again, this is Professor Cummings. Uh, go ahead and, and like the video. You know, it helps me out. It helps out my channel a bit. Gets me a little more exposure. Uh, also, another thing give me good exposure is sharing this with people who you think might need this. You know, if there's anybody doing any design, somebody who might be struggling in this topic, uh, go ahead and uh, you know, send it to them so they can get some benefit from this video. Um, also, you know, if there's any questions or anything, just go ahead and leave me a comment in the uh, comment section or any questions or any videos you think you want me to do moving forward. Uh, uh, thanks for watching.